Hello, everybody. I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. At Faith on Friday Presents, we're all about highlighting, inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses. And of course, today is never an exception. But while you're here, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this content with your network. Let's think about confidence. You know, the thing that everybody wants, but everyone has no idea how to get to it. The thing where people say you should have it, but you don't know, do you get it at Walmart? Do they sell it at Target? And then what about those of us who are women, women in high power businesses, high places, rock star stages, but we still lack confidence. Today, I wanna introduce you to a confidence transition coach. I love this title. Her name is Kirstine Williamson Gwen. Y'all please say hello to Ms. Kirstine. What's up, Kirstine, how are you? Hi, I'm really good, thank you, Ricky. I'm delighted to be with you today. Uh, thanks so much for being here. Okay, let's get the first thing out of the way. Christine, where are you? <laughs> I am in England. I'm about an hour north of London in Bedfordshire. Okay. And wow, that just, it just sounds <laughs> regal to me, the whole thing. It's, not. <laughs> it's really not. <laughs> well, I appreciate you being here, especially to talk about something called confidence. Confidence is like an intangible, the thing that everyone says we should have. Come on, Lee. Christine, where does confidence come from? Confidence comes from in here. Confidence is something that we built and we build it through our successes and we also build it through our failures or setbacks and that's one of the things that sometimes we overlook because we think confident people are just naturally confident and they don't get it wrong or they don't make mistakes but it's it's just not true if you think about every time you've had a setback or failure there's been learning in there and I bet you any money you've grown in confidence because you you know you can handle it next time. Yeah, that is so good. Because a lot of us, we see people, whether it's on stage, whether it's on TV, we see people out in the community doing great, fabulous rock star things. <laughs> and you think that they are just confident. You know, they're born that way. And I know you heard in the introduction, you deal with or work primarily with high power executive women. Did I get that right? You did. And one you of did. the things on your website that I saw, it's like, and I thought it was so interesting because it says that high power women have a tendency to doubt themselves more so than others. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, I think, so this is another thing about confidence. We think that once we get to a certain place, We've made it and we're never going to doubt ourselves again. But the truth is, as you keep growing and the further you go and the more you step outside of your comfort zone, the more you're likely to doubt yourself or have those moments where you feel a lack of confidence. Mm -hmm. What I do is I help people really connect with themselves and know how to connect with their confidence so that when that doubt creeps in, instead of... Uh, panic and stop what we're doing, hesitate, delay, procrastinate, all of that. We just think, oh, it's, it's self-doubt again. I know you. It's okay. This yeah. is how I deal with it. So it doesn't totally derail your plans or your progress. Right. So, yeah, I remember my business coach saying to me, because I'd reached a point in my business that I never thought I could because it was brand new. Mm -hmm. And I said, why am I doubting myself? And she said, another level, another devil. Woo, that and right there. Oh, <laughs> another level, another devil. So that yeah. brings up this point. How did you get started in this business of helping women become more confident? Well, I spent 32 years in banking. <laughs> I don't know how, but that I'm happened. like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So I left school at 16, went straight into a career in banking, didn't really know what I wanted, and just developed and built my career. Loved it for the most part. But then 
couple of years before I left, things were going on with my parents' health. My dad was terminal. My mum had dementia. And for the first time in my life and my career, I lost my confidence. And I know that's not what happens. You don't just lose it. You know, it's still there. I just didn't know how to tap into it. And I lost myself because I felt like I couldn't control things. Mm. And I'd always been able in my head to control. I'd been mm. in positions of control, but health and my parents, there was nothing I could do. So at that point, I'd been training as a health coach. Mm. And so I used what I was learning, built my own program for me, put myself through it and found my way through. And that's when I knew that I wanted to work with senior women like I was, who on the surface looked like I'd got everything together, but underneath the surface was clinging on for dear life <laughs> and holding it together, um, you know, oh, yeah. with, with with pins and sellotape and just every day going to work. Nobody knew what I was feeling, but I was just holding it together. Yeah. So that's when I knew something else is needed. Yeah. Wow. I, that is just so great. Um, one of my favorite lines from a movie that I saw years ago, there was a lady again in the same kind of boat, high power job. And like you said, on the, on the surface, she looked smooth as glass, but underneath, like you said, she was holding on for dear life. And her line was, she was telling her friends and she said, y'all have to help me. Cause I am literally holding to holding it together with duct tape and happy thoughts. <laughs> I just, <laughs> that's and, it. Yeah, a lot of us have been, where we're literally holding it together and no one knows. Nobody no. understands the stress, the pressure, how you're dealing. But what I like too is that it's not just high power women. It is a lot of folks who are in high power positions. You know, our sweets, our C-suite people, you know, CEO, CFO, CIO, LMNOPs, whatever, the whole thing. And a lot of folks are going through a really tough time but making it look good on the surface. But yeah. like you said, hold it up your life. Underneath. Yeah. And I mean, what's the cost? <laughs> what What's the cost of that? Because it, it's not great for your health. So that's what I do now. I help people feel good. Because when you feel good, then you can really tap into your confidence and you know that you can support yourself because confidence is just trust. You know, yes. it's, it's rooted in the, I think it's the Greek word for trust. So it, that's all it is. It's having that, it's with faith, con, they don't. That, that's so <laughs> great. So it's, it's trust and faith, but trust and faith in what, Christine? In yourself. Okay, yourself, your ability, your strength, your experience, your expertise. So how do you help people get there? What what do you give them? What tools can they take away from you after working with you? So I've got a system that I take people through and it starts with the relationship you have with yourself. That's the very first thing we do. And I help my clients start to listen, not to their head, <laughs> because we're always in our head. And our head is generally predictable, repetitive. Listen to their intuition, find their intuition and start paying attention to it and listening to what they need. Because we have the answers and quite often we outsource our intuition and go listen to other people. So that's oh, the gosh. first thing I do. <laughs> yeah. And listening to other people, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> well, that's that's the thing. So they tell you, don't be silly. You can't do it. You believe it. You stop where you're going. And yeah. So the first thing is really connecting and taking care of yourself. Then it's getting clear on your priorities. I teach people how to de-stress because that's a big deal. So there's lots of different things I do around um, conscious breathing working with the thoughts that you're having in a different way, understanding and maybe reframing. And we we do, I think as humans, we often err on worst case scenario. So one of my rules is if you're gonna go there, you have to go to best case scenario. And it's it's just kind of retraining yourself to, 
to get in your body, breathe, learn how to relax, do the things that make you feel good. Yeah. So that's the relaxed bit. Mm -hmm. Then I work on beliefs because we have some terrible limiting beliefs about ourselves that have been formed very early on and then we carry them like a heavy load through life. So mm -hmm. we, we release those. And then I teach people how to unlock their own power and mm -hmm. deal with some of these unhelpful patterns yeah. that stop us or slow us down so that's kind of my system there's yeah. lots of tools and techniques within that yeah. but the best bit is just seeing women do the things they never think they can do because oh, and we are so way nice. more powerful than we think we are I know and and like I like what you said we have to change the narrative in our own head because in our head is where we down ourselves we doubt ourselves we listen to the other people you know I one of the things that I tell people that voice in your head give it a name yeah. because it's easier to tell it to shut up by name yeah. than to just be like I can't stop thinking that no tell yeah. her to shut up or tell him yes. to shut up yeah so yeah, Definitely. for all I'm wondering, the girl in my head, her name is Kui Kui, and she is a hot mess. I'm just putting Kui that out there. Her name is Kui Kui, yeah. And she's very nice. She's she's mean. She's mean to me. If I let her out, she's mean to other people, and she loves food. Anyway, so name that thing. I love it. Uh, Kirsty, what's the name of your company? Elevate Women. So I, I started trading as return to work because I wanted to work with people at the most stressful time in their career, which is what I described for myself. But what happened was people got really confident and then decided to leave their job, which was a bit awkward, particularly if companies were paying. <laughs> so uh, I rebranded to Elevate Women. We need okay. more women in places of power. That's mm -hmm. what we need. So that's what I want to help. We, mm -hmm. we hear that a lot. We hear that so much. Yeah. So yeah. Christine, if people, if someone wanted to work with you, how would they get in touch with you? So they could email me, Kirstine, K-I-R-S-T-E-E-N at elevate-women.co.uk. All right. Don't worry, y'all. If you didn't get that written down, it's all going to be in the description below. And don't forget, while you're here with us, like, subscribe, share, tell everybody what we've got going on around here because we really, really depend on you. Christine, my friend, before I let you go, we have to play a game. I'm excited for this. I love it that you're excited. It cracks me up. So the game is called This or That, and I'm going to give you the choice of two or three things, depending on the question. And you off the top of your head, just tell me which one you like the best. Are you okay. ready to play, my friend? Ready? Let's do this. <laughs> Grits or oatmeal? Grits. I don't, I, we don't, what, I don't know what grits is. So... <laughs> wondering how some of this was going to play in the UK. Okay, so you don't know what grits is. We'll we chat later, grits. girl. Okay. Grits in the UK? Oh, yeah. I don't know. What, what, is, what is grits? Grits, it, it's hominy. It's basically broken up hominy. W don't worry, girl. I got you. We'll, okay. we'll chat later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> At the yellow light, slow down or speed up? Oh, speed up. So the rules are the Can't same in it. England. Okay, <laughs> oh, there you go. Shopping, online or on or in the store? Online, all day long. Dad. Airplanes, window seat, aisle seat? Aisle seat. Okay. Toilet paper, over or under? Over. Right? Why do people not know this? Okay. <laughs> House slippers or bare feet? Oh, slippers. Okay. TikTok or Twitter? Neither. But I'm on Twitter, answer. not TikTok. Yeah, I'm not on TikTok. I, I threatened no. to. Yeah, moving on. No. <laughs> East Coast or West Coast? Of America or of 
where I am. Where are you at? Let's see where you are. East Coast. East okay. Coast. What's on the East Coast? So I like the West Coast. Uh, I, I like the East Coast because I go to Norfolk and I'm probably more East Coast where I live. So it's nice to drive up the East Coast. Okay. See, I would not have known that. All right. <laughs> exercise or extra fries? Oh, <laughs> exercise. <laughs> I'm just curious. I'm just asking. <laughs> Reality TV. Yes, please. Or I just can't. Yes, but don't tell anyone. Married at first sight. So addicted. It's only between you and me, my friend. I promise. No <laughs> one will know. The Super Bowl. The game or the commercials? <laughs> okay, here's another one. American football or European football? I've, I've never watched American football. I'm we so sorry. So, we have so much to talk about after this We're, interview, I've my friend. I've got lots to learn, haven't I? You, but that's okay. I'm, I'm going to be patient with you. And finally, my friend, what is one thing that you wish people knew about you? Oh, wow. Uh, I think that I... Oh, God, that's really difficult, isn't it? I think I'm quite funny. I think once people get to know me, I can be quite funny. But it takes a bit of getting to know. I'm quite nice. Fire really. <laughs> yeah. You are. You dry, are absolutely dry. Love. Very Yay, dry. British humor. <laughs> love it. <laughs> <laughs> so give me a few minutes. Yeah, and then you'll warm up to it and it'll be hilarious. Awesome. <laughs> Christine, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate you. My pleasure. Me. Thank you, Ricky. <laughs> All right, everybody. That's it for this time. But don't worry. We'll be back next week with more Faith on Friday presents.